Sensitive information or sometimes data that should be kept secret can be accidentally published or pushed to online repositories like GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, and many others. Now, if you're a threat actor, if you're an adversary, if you're a red teamer or a penetration tester, you probably want to latch on to some of those juicy secrets. Sometimes you know what you're looking for and that makes it a little bit easier, but sometimes in a giant repository with lots of commits and changes and revisions, it can still be kind of like looking for a needle in a haystack. In this video, I'm going to show you one manual way that we can hunt down what we're looking for, one automated way that makes it a little bit easier, and then finally a tool that can help you find more secrets, more sensitive information that maybe you weren't even looking for to begin with. Let's dive in. I'm here in my Kali Linux virtual machine inside of the terminal, and I'm going to change directory or CD into the CI CD GOAT directory and folder. Now, if you haven't checked out the last video on hacking the pipeline, continuous integration and continuous deployment, that's what we're going to be diving into a little bit more today, and I am going to show you, hey, CICD GOAT is that awesome, sweet online tool resource project to help you learn a little bit more about pipeline security. That CICD, all the security things that we might have to take into consideration here. It has a whole lot of stuff already ready for us to work with, and I'm going to open up my web browser to get us back into the Capture the Flag game and exercise that we can learn. So in my web browser, I'm going to navigate to localhost on port 8000, and here we are in the CTFD, or Capture the Flag framework for CICD GOAT, the deliberately vulnerable CICD environment. Quickly log in here, we know the credentials are Alice and Alice, and this is just a local environment, so that's A-OK, -okay. we can have some small simple stuff here, and you can see I've already completed the challenge that we're going to dive into, but I do want to showcase it, because I think it's kind of fun. It says, hey, you know, if everybody just minded their own business, the world would go around a whole lot deal faster than it does. Does it apply your secrets as well? We've got access to this Wonderland Duchess repository, which heavily uses Python. The Duchess cares a lot about the security of her credentials, but there must be some PyPy token left somewhere. Can you find it? So some super quick background, just to add a little bit more color and context to this. If you aren't familiar, PyPy, P-Y-P-I, is sort of the package manager for Python libraries. The scripting language, you can actually go ahead and grab and download lots of modules or libraries or other things that can help enhance and extend your code, and publishing those is published out on PyPy. Now, you might be thinking, hey, a little bit nefarious here, if we could gain access to the token, the special API credentials that allow this individual, this developer, the software engineer to push to their production instance and actually have that bundled into a PyPy package, the Python installer for their code and software, well, you could have some potentially catastrophic effects, right? Maybe a piece of code or a library is used downstream in later software and programs and applications that use a library that it depends on from downloading or installing it from PyPy, and maybe you have a little bit of that supply chain attack. It's kind of wild, but let's have fun with it. So I'm going to open up a new tab and go to localhost 3000, where we have our git t service, and we know the credentials for this in our playground environment are the Alice and the Alice, and now we know that we want to get into this Wonderland repository, but it's the organization, mind you, so we're, if we're in one repo, we can just sort of bounce back out and scroll up to where their other repositories might be. We want to get into Dutch. Now take a look at this. This is a pretty hefty repository. Looks like it's a library for PyJWT or Python uh, JSON web tokens. There are some boilerplate stuff in the readme, but this repository is pretty big. You can see commits from a year ago, two years ago, four years ago, eight years ago, and there are 696 commits. So big thing here, but let's go ahead and play with it. I'm going to go ahead and copy the URL, right click over where my face is here, the clipboard button, and that way I can move over to the terminal and I can go ahead and git clone, if I type it correctly, this repository right here. Now I paste that in and I've downloaded it here. Now I have Duchess. Cool. So I'm in the directory, I'm in this repository, but I want to track down the PyPy token, the secrets, right? Now, bear in mind, I don't exactly know what I'm going to be going after here. And I want to just take this perspective from, hey, maybe a newcomer, from, hey, maybe a beginner. So I do want to stress, it's totally A-OK -okay to take a look at hints. Especially when there's no stakes in the game, it's here just all for learning. It says, hey, you know what? A PyPy token has a prefix of PyPy hyphen. Okay, cool. That helps us narrow this down. That helps us look for this thing because we could, I don't know, just try to use grep, right? We could use grep tack capital R to recursively look for pi pi hyphen as the pattern that we're looking for. And that'll look for all of the files in the current directory. Are there any indications of it? Okay, there's something in a talks.ini. We could try and open that up in our text editor here. Zooming in just a little bit. Hey, it looks like we have some configurations for some things, but if I were to look for just that pi pi hyphen, with control F, there's nothing all that interesting other than just some description tags. So that didn't really work for us.
Kairos. Uh, but that's all in the current display and structure of this repository, right? At the current state, or the head of the repo, where the most recent changes and revisions were made. Because this is a GitHub repository, because it's doing source version control management, you have the history, you have all the previous versions, all the deltas that have been made in your source code, and perhaps there were some issues, or some weaknesses, or some secrets stored in the past. So we want to dig through all of those. Now, the next hint here could clue us into that. It says, hey, mistakes could have been made in the past. Well... How should we look for this thing? Well, we could try to do a git log, right? And then we could see all of the past commits, not the current head location and the pointer that we're at right now, but all the previous changes. And remember, you saw there are 696 commits. So there are a heck of a lot of them. And doing this manually, trying to scroll through and see what might be an option for us to go find this PyPy token, probably won't work all that easily. We have to try and script this, at least in some way, that's kind of scrappy, kind of bad. So this is an old technique that I used to use a lot, but it's made much, much better now by the new thing I want to show you in just a moment. But what we could do is we could try to use git log as we just did, but grep for every single line that includes a commit. I'm adding a space in here, because remember, you probably saw all those SHA-1 SHA or those big hexadecimal identifiers. Now this will return all of those values that just identify every single change made in the repository. So what I could do is actually cut this. Let's say, hey, you know what? I want to cut with the delimiter of a space and then get the second field. So I'll pass in tack F for field, two for the second, and now I have all of these. These are all of the commits. Now, what I could do is I could try to git show one of those. And that will actually show me the changes that were made in that commit. Now, this will have all of the plus or minus, the diffs, the patches that have been changed here. What we could do is we could try to take one of those and grep for that pi pi token. I realize my face is in the way, so let me move that down. We can grep for that pi pi hyphen, see if we can track anything down. Obviously we don't in that commit, but what's to stop us from looping through all of the commits that we've just uncovered? What if we were to do some weird wacky bash scripting and let's do like a while read line. So all of the lines are gonna be passed through standard output into the standard input of the read function so that I could then, just for a sanity check, let's go ahead and echo out the value of that line. Hey, we'll get the exact same output as we saw earlier because it's just being funneled back out to standard output. But because we now have a loop inside of a do syntax with a semicolon to separate these logic branches and another semicolon to close out our done to note the end of this logic branch, what we can do is we can say, hey, let's go ahead and git show that line. Now, all of these specific changes are going to be displayed and they're going to be paginated so you can see my little uh, colon here at the bottom. But if I hit Q, I'll move on to the next one and then the next one and then the next one and then the next one and the next one and the next one and the next one. Now, if I hit uh, Control C or yeah, <laughs> that will bring me back. But now that all of that is being spewed out on the standard output, what if I took this entire line after I spat out everything in my while loop and I tried to grep through that? Let me try and grep for that pi pi hyphen now in all of this output. Kind of ghost, kind of kind of gross, kind of awful, but take a look at, we saw some interesting stuff here. We saw this password looks like a pi pi hyphen a G E I blah, 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 blah. This is displayed twice because it was hate probably added once and then removed, right? Uh, as we see, it's not in our current head or the certain pointer where we're at right now in the repository. Now that works, but obviously having to have to type this every time over and over again is kind of gross and stupid and dumb. There are easier ways to do it and I want to show you that in just a moment and then I want to show you the super cool tool that might find even more stuff. But before we go any further, I do want to give some love and a special shout out to today's sponsor who does even great stuff, incredible things in CI, CD pipelines, continuous integration, continuous deployment, and all that stuff to help keep your software secure. You know who it is, my friends. Let's give some loves to Sneak. I'll be honest, I write bad code. Even though I try to hunt for vulnerabilities and lots of other software, I still have vulnerabilities even in my own projects. Everyone does. And that's why I use Sneak to scan for vulnerabilities in code, dependencies, containers, and configuration files. And Sneak helps find and fix those vulnerabilities in real time. You can try it and see for yourself. You can sign up for free with my link below. 
import your repositories, and sit back and let Sneak do the work for you. It'll find the flaws and vulnerabilities in your own applications. Check out this prototype pollution vulnerability that Sneak uncovered. We can see more details about the code path that introduced this vulnerability, and even learn more about this kind of vulnerability or any others if you check out the Sneak Learn Lesson. I've referenced the Sneak Learn Lessons and their vulnerability database a ton, especially in assessments and penetration testing, and even during Capture the Flag competitions. From there, you can see an explanation of the flaw, proof of concept exploit code and attack demonstrations, and most importantly, how to mitigate this vulnerability. But the best part? Sneak helps you fix this vulnerability with a single click. It'll automatically open a pull request so you can just merge and move on. So seriously, check out Sneak. It's crazy how many vulnerabilities could be affecting your projects and you don't even realize. Take advantage of their resources and learning material and learn all about the different vulnerabilities out there. It's completely free and you can sign up right now with my link in the video description. Huge thanks to Sneak for sponsoring this video. Okay, and now we are right back in it. Let's go ahead and clean this thing up. Let's not use this giant, long, gross one-liner for a while loop, and yet do something that we can do in more modern Git versions. We can use git grep, and that's, that's it. it. It does basically everything that we've already done, but we could search for PyPy hyphen here, but this just shows us everything that we already saw because, again, it's only looking in the current head or the current revision. Well, we might be able to expand that out because git grep could let us do a little bit more stuff. If we actually take a look at the uh, hyphen H here to check out the help, you can see, okay, what pattern do you wanna be looking for in a given revision or commit here? So what I'll do is actually, I think the line is git rev tac tac list all, is that right? No, git commit. No, let me ask Uncle Google. Git grep all commits. I want to encourage you to do this. I want to, you have a little bit of intuition to go search and Google and research on your own. But hey, check it out. Okay, it's git uh, rev list tac tac all. And he passes this in with a dollar sign parentheses, so some command substitution. Because what this will do, if we ran this command on its own, I'll copy and paste that here, you'll see that it spits out all of those commits as we saw just a moment ago. So even the gross poor man's method that I did to like cut that out of GitLab, Log, you can make it super duper easy if you just do this. So with that said, let's use that git grep on our pypy hyphen, and let's go ahead and paste in this command substitution for all of the commits that we saw just a moment ago, and let's see if this cranks it out. There it is, okay, a whole lot of stuff. There is a lot of stuff and all these different specific commits and the talks representation of it. I'm sure it's gonna be like listing that for every single file, but we'll probably, if we keep scrolling down, go find that token that we saw just a moment ago. To be honest, we could probably grep out some of the talks.ini because we know we don't want that. So let's go ahead and grep tack V to invert that lookup and that search and let's remove the talks.ini presence there. Whoa, okay, a whole lot more noise, but Probably don't need the readme either. We could cut that out. We could filter, do some quick learning on the fly. Let me do that too. I'll do another grep tack V for our readme. And maybe we could whittle down the stuff that we know we're looking for. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen, the very, very same password that we saw just a moment ago. Now, what we might be able to do is actually get show this commit, because we know this is a commit separated by the colon here. Maybe a better method is actually going to check out that commit. There we go. If it lets me do that. Cool. Uh, and now we know that we were looking at, what was this, .pypyrc. So let's go ahead and grab that file and open that up and check it out. Now we can see the original form of this. We can see that it was credentials passed to this configuration for the PyPy repository. The username being underscore underscore token is in fact how you access the PyPy as sort of an API client and push things to it that way. The password is going to be, of course, your token. So that is sensitive, that is dangerous, and that is what we were looking for here. Now. Finally, forgive me, let me show you the very, very last trick. Because if I were to copy this, if I were to go ahead and, I don't know, go bring it back to our scoreboard, sure, hey, let's go ahead and submit this flag. 
we got it correct, right? We have already solved it. That is the correct answer. But if I wanted to go check out what other folks have suggested as the solution, what we could do is learn something new. Maybe there's some other tools. Maybe there's some better techniques, some tricks that we could learn. So again, I don't think there's any shame. If you're trying to learn something, go ahead and take a look at the solutions. And in the repository for CICD GOAT, you can see the solution for duchess.md. We've already solved the challenge, so I don't think there's anything wrong with us taking a peek. And what they suggest is, look, hey, exactly what we've been yapping about. Secrets are sometimes pushed to online repositories. But uh, even if you try to remove the secret from the branch, well, it's still exposed in a pass commit, which is still accessible. So what they do is clone the repository just as we have, but they use a tool called GitLeaks, which is super duper cool if you've never seen it before. GitLeaks is going to look, like detect, hunt, scan for, and try to find those hard-coded secrets like passwords, API keys, and tokens. It's super duper easy to use. It's like literally one command, and you can find some dangerous stuff in there. There's some quick and easy ways to install it. However, I do believe it is just in the Kali command line. Uh, so if I actually use GitLeaks, um, you might need to install it. You can do a sudo apt install GitLeaks. It is in the repositories, I believe. Uh, but with that, you might have seen the syntax from just that snippet that we were looking at. Try to use git leaks detect, and then we'll want to use tack v. Because if you don't, it just tells you, hey, 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 we found bad stuff. <laughs> Here's our 11 leaks in here, but you probably want to know what they are. So let's use detect tack v for verbose, and let's see what it tracked down. A lot of interesting stuff in here. Might be finding an RSA private key. You probably haven't seen that before. Might be finding other private keys. Might be finding a, just a generic API key, potentially in these APIs that it might be working with within the source code. Or maybe more private keys, but ultimately we could probably track down our PyPy upload token. And even knows what it is. It even had a little bit more context as to what the heck we're looking at here. And it tells you what commit it found it in. And it told you what file. And it did all the hard work for you. That's pretty slick. That's pretty cool. I absolutely want to remember and know this Git Leaks tool. I haven't seen it before, but man, is it awesome. And I'm sure if you're doing some security testing, like if you're a penetration tester or if you're doing vulnerability assessments or just hacking away, uh, that is probably something that you want to be able to reach out for and use when you're examining what is an organization's security posture for their online or public potentially facing infrastructure or even their behind the scenes internal stuff. If that ever were to be leaked some way, somehow probably would be bad. Uh, and maybe you can better detect that ahead of time with tools just like this. So with that, Hey, I've been rambling for quite a little bit. I hope you learned something and had a little bit of fun in this video. If you did, please do this YouTube algorithm things like comment, subscribe. <laughs> Same thing I say every time. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I'll see you in the next video.